Recently I posted a video posing the question, how hard is Dark Souls if you have the highest possible DPS? Now, the premise of that video was sound, but the title was a little inaccurate. The question was more about having the highest DPS weapon, not the literal highest DPS possible. I was called out, rightfully, by someone called AMRMans2. At least, I think that's how you pronounce it? Anyway, they got a significantly higher DPS than I did by using Power Within and the Red Tearstone Ring. The problem is, they didn't have the highest DPS possible either, so if you're gonna call me out for not having the highest DPS, you gotta do it better than that. I didn't use the Red Tearstone Ring because I figured it would make the game harder, and I didn't use Power Within, frankly because I heavily underestimated it. That one is kind of on me. The problem with using either one is that it locks you out of using the other. So if you're using the Red Tearstone Ring, your health has to be under 20% of your maximum, but Power Within drains your health at about 1% per second for 100 seconds. So you'll die in 26 maximum with a perfect RTSR setup, and even then, drinking Estus takes a few seconds, so you can't really use both at the same time effectively. That is, you can't use both if you don't specifically use a build for it. Also, they didn't power level, which I'm gonna do just to be petty. I'm not actually upset at them, but fake beef is funny. Also, I want to draw attention to their video because it's pretty good and it's sitting at about 50 views as of writing this. So, here's what you need to do in order to get the true highest DPS in Dark Souls. Take out the Asylum Demon, use some intentional game mechanics to buy a really heavy sword, and get a lot more souls so you can get Endurance, Strength, Dexterity, and Faith to 99 and get two attunement slots. Use some more intentional game mechanics to enter Sen's Fortress, grab some large Titanite shards and a chunk from the Firebomb Giant for later, take out the Iron Golem, kill a lot of Painting Guardians for their sword, get the Lord Vessel, Use some more intentional game mechanics to enter the depths and grab the large ember, as well as free learn chase for the pyromancy flame. Shoot inward, grab the very large ember, use some more intentional game mechanics and some more heavy swords to get enough materials to get the pain and guardian sword to plus 14, join the blades of the dark moon covenant, grab a crow demon's ear, get another heavy sword, and give Gwendolyn 99 ears, enter blight town and painstakingly climb from the bottom to get power within, grab the red tearstone ring at some point through all this, I forgot when I did, kill pinwheel in two hits, not three this time, Realize you forgot to place the Lord Vessel. Realize you can't until you kill the Gargoyles in one hit each and Quaylag in four. Back up your save in case Leroy decides to jump off a cliff. Take the Sanctus, kill the Hydra in four hits, kill Sif in four hits, then the Four Kings in ten because you can't actually use the highest DPS on the Four Kings because you need the Dust Crown Ring from the Hydra and RTSR, but you need the Covenant of Artorias for the Four Kings. Uh, then get cursed, put on the Dust Crown Ring, get into RTSR range, then activate power within. Use Dark Moon Blade, swap out the Talisman for the Sanctus, and enjoy. Alright, while you're watching me melt some bosses, a couple things. First of all, I was right that RTSR would make the game harder. Nido was a nightmare like this. Also, I completely forgot that the weapon buff goes away when you swap your weapon, so you have to have the Pyromancy Flame in your right hand with the weapon, and the Talisman and Sanctus in your left. With that, you just need to make sure that you use Power Within before Dark Moon Blade. I also wasn't in RTSR range for the first few fights because my health was too low, so Power Within wasn't hurting me as much as I thought it would, but largely it doesn't really matter as you can see. Just make sure you have about 800 total maximum HP when you're cursed, and the rates of Power Within and the Sanctus should cancel out approximately. With that, enjoy the spectacle. I used Cheat Engine to change my Journey 2 into Journey 7 for max enemy scaling so you could see how this build performs with the hardest bosses in the game in the hardest possible state. I did end up getting a repetitive strain injury in the middle of it, so I didn't do all the bosses, but I did do the DLC bosses because they have the highest health and they probably matter the most. Um, and while you're watching this, I do have a couple things to say. First of all, um, I haven't been able to release the highest possible AR video because I haven't had a chance to record quite as much. Um, I barely am able to record this right now. Uh, also, my next run after that will be items from only the Asylum, and then in the future, a few challenge runs I have planned, um, a Balder Knight cosplay run because I wanted to use the Balder Side Sword, as well as uh, the Life on Scythe, that's what it's called. I also want to do a Chaos Damage playthrough, um, so level 1 at New Game plus 6, which is the highest scaling New Game, and... I have a bunch more planned. <laughs> anyway, I have a bunch more challenge runs. If you have more that I should do uh, in Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2 or 3, or Elden Ring, any game. I'm not good at Elden Ring. Maybe don't suggest Elden Ring challenge runs. Anyway, uh, any other games that I should do challenge runs in, whatever. I would love to hear them. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I love you all. And um, I was going to say I don't know how to end this, but I guess the end of this will just be all the boss fights. Thank you, Manorock, Edril Durano, V, Emily, and Ryan Rickard for continuing to support the channel.